So you're studying for the SAT Math Level 2 Subject Test. You've come to the right place. I'm Dan from WeWillTeachYouMath.com. Guys, when you're using these videos to study, make sure you pause the video at the beginning when the problem first comes on the screen and try it on your own. Most of your practice should be done this way, actively and independently. Then, if after you try the problem on your own, you still find it tricky, that's when you watch the video explanation. In fact, you can use any resources that you have available to you to try to figure it out so that the next time a similar problem comes your way, you'll be ready. Enjoy, and thanks for watching. 25. The polar coordinates of a point P are 2, 240 degrees. The Cartesian rectangular coordinates of P are what? So let's talk about polar and rectangular. If you just, and this is really general, right? Not specific to this problem, but if you have a point randomly, you can define it in two ways. The way that we're most accustomed to is using what's called rectangular coordinates. We say, okay, we'll call this the x-axis, we'll call this the y-axis. If we have to go over this many units on the x and this many, and go up this many units on the y, then we call this point P x, y. So that's what we're accustomed to. What we're not so accustomed to is polar coordinates where we define how far away the point is from the origin and we call that the radius r and then we define the angle between the horizontal axis and that terminal, that line, that radius that connects the origin to that point. We call that theta. We can define a point using rectangular coordinates so for rectangular this is what we're used to. We define a point as x, y, or polar, where we define a point in terms of r and theta. It's really no different. Well, I mean, it's certainly different, but I mean, it's you, you can do anything in polar that you can do in rectangular, and in some cases, it's actually preferable to use polar, but most of what we do in, in, in high school algebra and trigonometry and, and whatnot is um, rectangular. So we just need to know enough about polar for this. So here we have a radius that's 2 and a theta that's 240 degrees. So let's deal with this problem specifically now. We'll draw a graph and the radius is 2 but I don't know where to put it so let's do theta first 240 if this is 0 degrees 90 180 unit circle right and this is 270 180 270 um, then 240 is going to be 60 degrees past 180 so it's maybe it's right around here that would be 240 degrees and now we can define this triangle. I really want to make this a right angle. So this is a right angle. And we have a radius that's 2. So this is point P. It's 2 units away from the origin along that hypotenuse. And this angle here is 240. Which means that with specific reference to this triangle, let's take that triangle out and draw it a little bigger over here so we can work on it. That triangle has a hypotenuse of 2, a right angle here, and this angle is going to be 60 degrees. That's the reference angle. That's how much of the 240 lies below the horizontal axis, which means this angle is going to be 30, because the sum of the measure of the internal angles of any triangle has to add to 180. And now, because it's a special 30, 60, 90 right triangle, we know the ratio of the shorter leg to the longer leg to the hypotenuse has to fit the ratio that we know all 30, 60, 90 right triangles have to live by which is 1 to root 3 to 2. And this is a general rule for 30, 60, 90 triangles but in this case it actually matches up perfectly because the hypotenuse actually is 2 so we don't actually really even need to do any work at all. We can literally make the longer leg root 3 and the shorter leg one. So those those are not only the ratios, those are the actual dimensions for this triangle. And um, what they want to know is if if this point P is defined this way in polar coordinates, these are the polar coordinates, how do we define it in rectangular coordinates? Well we'd have to go over to the left one unit and down root three units. 
So that point would be negative 1, negative root 3. That would be the rectangular way of describing the location of point P, and that's choice A. Hi, thanks for watching. If anything's still confusing or you need a little extra help, drop me an email, leave a comment, or give me a call. I answer every message. And if you want to check out more videos like this, visit wewillteachyoumath.com. See you in the next video.